I would say one of the uh, more challenging aspects of treating patients with colorectal cancer in the later stage population would be trying to differentiate what is causing the nausea or what is causing the pain versus could it be the treatment, could it be their cancer. A lot of patients in the third line setting have disease, obviously not just you know in their colon, they could have it in their liver and this can create a lot of problems regarding symptoms that they are suffering from um, and trying to find the balance where to maintain adherence to the drug uh, can be difficult because you're trying to figure out what is the driving force of the symptom that they're suffering from, specifically in patients with advanced colorectal cancer in the liver causing nausea and vomiting. Uh, that a lot of times can be disease related and not necessarily treatment related. So trying to come up with the, uh, trying to assess patients and uh, really figure out what is causing their symptom um, if it's their disease, may, we may not necessarily want to consider dose modifying their treatment. Um, but if it is, uh, you know, certainly if it's the drug itself causing some of these tr these symptoms, uh, lowering the dose or modifying the dose in an effort to continue therapy is important. For example, for when patients are uh, per perhaps on a drug like recorafenib, it's important that we try and assess their symptoms uh, to try and tease out whether we think it's disease related or could be treatment related. There might be, a, be room for a dose modification, uh, lowering the dose so that we can continue therapy to um, maintain a better quality of life. There's often even situations where we might say, let's start at a lower dose. Uh, maybe they already come in with some comorbidities or disease related side effects of nausea and poor appetite. And we might consider starting at a lower dose and then um, giving room or with the option keeping in mind, okay, if we started a lower dose and they do okay, then we can always increase it. Uh, so that's often something we, we consider as well. And, uh, and this is all to kind of promote uh, the ability to continue the drug uh, while balancing a better quality of life. I would say dose reduction plays a huge role in side effect management. It's finding this balance of how to maintain adherence to therapy without causing a huge change in their quality of life. We want them to be able to continue to work, to go out, to be engaged in social activities while on therapy. There's no point in doing all of this if they're sick, you know, in a bed or, or you know, can't live life the way they want to. So there's a, a lot of more art and science kind of mixed together when it comes to managing treatment regarding um, keeping them on treatment, balancing their side effects. So dose modifications are often a huge part of how we can uh, continue therapy without leading to having to eliminate the drug altogether. There's definitely specific situations that I can think of in the top of my head uh, for patients specifically even on regorafenib. A gentleman who was an older gentleman who had been on full dose therapy for uh, quite a long time and uh, he started developing issues with hypertension and he was known to a cardiologist and I uh, we were able to continue therapy for several more months with lowering the dose of the uh, regorafenib and also uh, maximizing his anti-hypertensive uh, uh, regimen uh, so that he was able to continue therapy and uh, maintain a good quality of life. We definitely try and make it very clear to patients that their quality of life is the number one goal while on therapy, specifically with uh, survivorship and maintaining you know, a healthy lifestyle and uh, engaging in activities that make them happy, doing things with their family. And we, we often try to make workarounds if we have to, to continue therapy so that they can also continue to go to work. Whether it be having them come for treatment at seven in the morning so that they can go right to work afterwards. Whether it be um, trying to schedule their vacations in between treatments so that they can continue to do things with their family or do events with their family while continuing therapy. Um, and uh, most of the domains in our institution feel the same way. And uh, for instance, radiation, the radiation oncology team will often, you know, have patients come in after work so that they can continue to live their lives as normally as they can uh, while on therapy.